Conference opponent tonight, Sam Houston State, led offensively by their true freshman, Brody Quinlan. Coach Valley is talking about Brody Quinlan and the fact not only does she lead them offensively with average, but this is a freshman that has some pop and she's able to adjust in game like she's a veteran player. The Bearcats really need her to come through, move down to the three hole tonight to get some RBIs, but they're going to need her in order to stay in this game. Sam Houston State led by UT grad class of 2007. Garrett Valish at his fourth season in charge. Southland Conference Coach of the Year back in 2019. And his offense comes into this one batting 237 on the season, but led at the top by a senior, Sheridan Fisher. Sheridan Fisher is going to be the only senior in this lineup for Coach Valish, and he's looking for her hot hitting to continue. You see there, she's batting 429 in the last two games, and he really wants her to be the spark plug to get them going. That offense will be going up against Haley Dolcini, the senior who's coming off one of her best outings of the season for Texas. Coach White giving Dolcini some starts to get her confidence back, get her back in her normal groove. She got a little roughed up out in Florida, but Coach White and her working hard in the pen, trying to see if it'll pay off. Her last start, one run allowed in six innings with seven strikeouts. Texas comes into this one nine and seven overall, five and one at home. And again, winners of four straight after dropping six in a row, which was one of the longest losing streaks in program history. But they are back on track. Mike White, and the magic number so far during his tenure with Texas is three. He is 109 and nine when his offense puts up three runs or more. And we are underway here in Austin. Sheridan Fisher leading off against Haley Dolcini. Dolcini tied for the team lead in strikeouts with 31 in 33 innings. We're gonna see Dulcini work both sides of the plate. She has a little low rise screwball action that you'll see arm side outside here to lefty Sheridan Fisher. You saw her miss a little bit low there with a curveball, And then her favorite pitch, her best pitch is probably her rise ball. So we'll see her elevate the zone with that. Finds the strike zone there, two and one. Sam Houston State comes in five and nine overall. They've lost three in a row. Last year went 19 and 31, including a loss to Texas on this very field, nine to three. Swing and a miss, strike two. We'll see a lot of left-handed hitters in this Sam Houston lineup. However, they're not sloppers. Coach Vallis talking about how they have a lot of left-handed power, which he likes. I'm gonna relate that to he might have gotten <laughs> familiar with that when he worked at, under Coach Woodard at Texas State and is a grad assistant. I know she likes that lefty power too, but he has quite a bit of lefty power, but you won't see them so much run through the box and use speed. He has a few speedsters, um, but he said they're, they've been a little inconsistent, so he's been going with the consistency and the power as opposed to trying to play small ball. And trying to snap out of a three-game slide, Fisher fouls one back. The All-Southland Conference hitter a year ago. Two two on the way. Defensively for Texas, the infield starting to get settled in with Scott at third. Washington, who's been fantastic over at shortstop, Jefferson at second, Iacopo at first, and J.J. Smith catching behind the dish. Burke Papelka and Whitaker rounding out the outfield. Swing and a miss, and there's the tag. A game-opening strikeout by Haley Dolcini. Haley Dolcini set this pitch up well. The foul ball right before this was an off-speed pitch. She comes up and in with her rise ball. Sheridan Fisher just unable to lay off it. J.J. Smith quickly grabbing that ball and tagging her out. But that's the pitch that Dolcini has to get going after she's getting, gotten ahead of hitters. And that's the key. She has to get ahead of hitters in order to be able to use her rise ball. Again, began the year on the National Player of the Year watch list. Immensely talented transfer from Fresno State. There we see Haley Dolcini throws mid to upper 60s. We mentioned her rise ball. She does have a changeup. She's been working on with Coach White in the off season since she got here in January. But she has some energy and really wants to win. <laughs> some energy tonight starts off with two straight Ks to begin the evening. Her competitive spirit is what Coach White talked about. So 
They're going to look for her to set the tone early, and so far she is. She gets 0-2, and, and another rise ball through the zone that Lange just cannot lay off of. That's moving really well, starting kind of at the letters or the hands and moving on through the zone. Here's Brody Quinlan, the freshman, leading the team with a 349 average. So Dulcini and the freshman Sophia Simpson going back and forth in the strikeout race. Dulcini now in sole possession of first right now with 33 strikeouts and 33 and two thirds. Rounding into form. Bit of a rocky start to the year for Dulcini. She did look awfully impressive against Clemson in the complete game shutout. Had some up and down contests after that, but now seems to be getting in a good groove. Yeah, I think there was a lot of hype with Dulcini coming into this Texas pitching staff, and rightfully so. She was an All-American a year ago. However, if you look at her past history, she didn't have to necessarily play ranked opponents day in and day out. She went out to Florida, played Clemson first, great start, and they go down for the Clearwater Invitational, and they faced a ranked opponent every single day. And, and that's a little bit of a different start and a different mentality, and I think Haley Dulcini will bounce back from that. Two out walk issue to Quinlan. Well, you talked about Clearwater, the ranked teams they face there throughout the entire weekend, and you talk about the ranked team they're going to face coming up next weekend, or at least this coming weekend, Alabama, number two team in the nation. I mean, that is also going to be a major test for Dulcini, Mike White, and the Longhorns. Yeah, Coach White and his staff put together an extremely strong schedule, 27 games against opponents that were ranked the first week out. So they knew they were going to be tested, but you want to be tested early, figure out what you're not good at, deal with the adversity. As we mentioned last weekend, Coach White saying adversity provides opportunity. Mm -hmm. Texas took a lot of opportunities last weekend. Swing and a miss, strike one. Texas playing their fifth straight game without Mackenzie Parker at short as she continues to recover from a shoulder injury. Parker's still second on the team in batting average. There is strike two from Dolcini to Hannah Schaefer, sophomore from Cyprus. One, two with two away. One foul back. That was coming after you. was <laughs> awfully close. I'm relying, I looked your way. You, you gotta save me with those come up to this vicinity. I'll there use, is I'll use the Parker. backhand. <laughs> the left hand doesn't go that way. Okay, it, it, Mike White said this was the deepest team he's had since he's been here. You saw Mackenzie Parker in the dugout. To be able to go to the bench and have such a terrific performer like Alyssa Washington replace Parker is evidence of the depth on this team. Yeah, for Texas not to miss a beat with Mackenzie Parker going out offensively and defensively is huge for the Longhorns. Parker looks on, 2-2 two -two with two away. Swing and a miss, and Haley Dolcini strikes out the side here in the top of the first inning, getting Fisher, Lange, and now Hannah Schaefer. Longhorns offense coming up next against the Bearcats here in Austin. Mike White in his fourth year in charge of the Longhorns, a career winning percentage of nearly 80%. Sixth best among active D1 coaches. His offense comes into this one, averaging nearly five and a half runs per game. Doing a lot of damage over the last four contests. How about Alyssa Papelka's addition back into the starting lineup? Yeah, Texas had to make some changes in order to get some momentum after that six game losing streak. And Alyssa Papelka has moved around in this lineup, but she has consistently found her way on base and able to take some extra bases. Fabulous freshman Mia Scott leading off against Christine Billmeyer, the sophomore who's making her first start of the season. Yeah, Christine Billmeyer is the change of pace pitcher for these Bearcats. They, she doesn't necessarily throw hard. She throws a drop and a change. She'll float that change in there. 
throws about 58 to 60. I think Coach Vallish and his staff really just trying to give Texas a completely different look than what they saw this weekend. Now, Bill Meyer did face Texas briefly last year, lasted just a third of an inning, allowing three runs and issuing three walks against Texas. And starting off 3-0 to Mia Scott, who's been a went, just a one-person wrecking crew this year. I feel like a broken record. We say the same thing every game, but she doesn't let up. A team leading 500 average, 545 when leading off, and riding a seven-game hitting streak. She has currently reached in eight straight contests. That one fouled off. Just phenomenal numbers. An aggressive, intense player out there, not only offensively, but defensively as well. Yeah, we see her do a little bit of everything. We've seen her bunt. We haven't seen home run power, but we've seen power to the wall. You'll see her run through the box like she's gonna slap. And then as you mentioned, Alex, once she gets on base, she doesn't just steal, she finds a way to take not just 60 feet, but 120 most of the time. Yeah, one of the fastest players on the team. 3-1, sends one to left center. Grill watches that one bounce off the track in the wall. And that's a leadoff double by Mia Scott, now riding an eight-game hitting streak. Well, I said she hadn't shown us a lot of power, and she got close to leaving the ballpark here. Mia Scott takes this offering from Bill Meyer, drives it deep to left center. I thought she might round and try to go third with the aggressive running we've seen her have, but safely at second to lead off the Longhorns. I mean, there's only so many adjectives we can use to describe her. We're running out because she continues to impress her third double of the year. Here's Janae Jefferson batting in the two spot. The interesting thing I think we've seen in the last couple games, Alex, is the fact that with Coach White's depth of this lineup, the offensive lineup can change any which way, and it's still effective because of the speed and power that they combine this year. Jefferson pokes one to left field. That's going to bring home Mia Scott. That's going to roll all the way back to the wall, and Jefferson will end up on third. one nothing Texas. After showing Bud, Janae Jefferson runs through the box, gets a ball, drives it just past the shortstop. Shouldn't be a triple, but everyone was shifted. So the shortstop shifted towards third. Left and center were spread out, treating her like a pure slapper. That gets to the wall, Janae Jefferson's speed. Triple and a run for the Longhorns. That is Jefferson's first triple of the season since moving into, well, let's say since moving out of the leadoff spot, whether it's hitting third or second, Jefferson is now hitting above 420 after a slow start to the season. Here's Mary Iacopo. Iacopo leading the team in extra base hits with seven. Back-to-back changeups there from Bill Meyer. It does, in fact, float in there. You don't see a drop-off. Iacopo did homer last year against this Bearcats team. Patient here as the count goes two and one. So a leadoff double by Mia Scott, followed by an RBI triple by Janae Jefferson. Here's Iacopo awaiting the two one. There is strike two. Another change up about belt high. Their plan for Iacopo is obviously to mix them off speed, see if they can get her out in front, keep her from driving the ball hard, maybe get a miss hit to keep Janae Jefferson at third. Off speed, full count. Katie Simmets, the freshman on deck. We're seeing a little more sense of urgency out of the Longhorns today. This one chopped over to short. Tell goes home. They got Jefferson in a rundown. Iacopo's going to head to second. Jefferson's still alive. And finally, they make the tag. So that saves a run for the Bearcats. First out of the game, and Iacopo 
on second. Well, here comes Katie Simmons coming up to bat, and she has turned it on offensively as of late. We've seen her at catcher and first base for the Longhorns DPing tonight. She's reached in seven, seven straight and during that span. She's hitting 500, nine RBIs, two home runs and five walks. She's caught fire. Yeah, Katie Simmons, a freshman that the Longhorns are going to need. She is another catcher for them. Mary Iacopo has been their primary catcher. Mary not catching every day. Simmons coming in as a highly touted catcher. So the Longhorns need her in the lineup to get comfortable offensively to be able to fill in back there behind the plate. And she took off that last half of the Texas Classic. You talk about being behind the plate, not starting a catcher tonight, but when she does zero pass balls on the season. Time is called. Texas as a team came into the game hitting 280 on the season. 0-2. Bill Meyer using that changeup. Mentioned it against Iacopo. She did throw that for the last pitch that Iacopo grounded out, or well, grounded over to the shortstop. Lauren Burke waiting in the wings behind Simmons. 0 2 from Bill Meyer, swing and a miss, strike three, second out of the frame. Against a pitcher like Bill Meyer, the Longhorns can't necessarily be overly aggressive. She's getting behind in the count. She has that floaty changeup. You have to be able to stay back. Simmons chasing a ball down for strike three. That is actually Bill Meyer's first strikeout of the season. And now her sixth appearance. But just her third inning of work. Burke over to first, and just like that, the inning comes to an end. But two hits to lead off the game. Result in a 1-0 Texas lead after one. Longhorn Network Softball is brought to you by Whataburger. Whataburger knows just how to satisfy your cravings. The Dr. Pepper Shake, available for a limited time. On to the second inning we go. Longhorns grabbing the early 1-0 lead thanks to an RBI triple from Janae Jefferson. Haley Dolcini coming out into the circle. A beautiful night for softball. It's actually warm compared to, was it a week ago? The wind chill was 28 degrees for the game we were doing just about a week ago against Arizona State. Yeah, like four days ago. <laughs> now it's 71. And Texas looking good. Dolcini struck out the side in the first inning. Now facing the five, six, and seven hitters. Led off by Kylie Hobbs. Hobbs, the sophomore from Lexington, second on the team in batting average, RBIs, and walks. Hitting 300, swing and a miss. It's been the story so far against Dolcini. A lot of swings, a lot of misses as well. Dolcini doing a great job of attacking the zone early, using her low rise, her off speed, really just being able to keep the Bearcats guessing. Jefferson drifting over makes it look easy. Comes Ellie Grill, the sophomore from Angleton. Grill. Grill, another one of these left-handed hitters. It's going to hit more than she's going to slap, but we will see some speed out of her. Coach Valish mentioned that if she gets on base, he lets her run. He allows her to, I would kind of say, set the tone the way Mia Scott does for the Longhorns. Now this Sam Houston State team actually out hit Texas last year in their lone meeting 7-6, but came up short on the scoreboard 9-3. Eric Balish done a nice job with his squad. Is that one misses high and inside on the 
a coach who was very familiar with these athletes in this program before taking over. He was an assistant for four years under uh, legendary coach Bob Brock, coached at AM before he was at Sam Houston. He won a national championship at AM, if I recall. Not bad. Valish. First season, guided the Bearcats to their first Southland Conference regular season title since 1993. I mean, that's just a massive accomplishment. It's just a fourth overall regular season conference title has been fouled off. Now the batter is out. With two strikes, Hobbs resorted to slapping. And I believe the home plate umpire called her stepping out of the box. And when she makes contact with the ball out of the box, if she has two strikes, she's automatically out. So there you see her front foot well out of the, ba the batter's box, resulting in a foul ball. And since she has two strikes, that's an out. If she had less than two strikes, that would have just gone down as a foul ball. So quickly two away for Braley Wasik. And there is strike one. Freshman from Burleson hitting 333. Tolcidi has retired five of the first six batters she has faced tonight. Wasik, a freshman pitcher for the Bearcats as well, being in the DP spot tonight. I would guess that she's the next arm up if, the, if Sam Houston needs her. One back up the middle, first hit of the night for Sam Houston State. Haley Dolcini fell behind in the count. Wasik knowing that her strength is the inside, doesn't try to do too much with this pitch, just drives it back up the middle. Dolcini having to duck to get out of the way with that. But the Bearcats have their first hit of the night. With two outs, so here is Elia Hebel, transfer from Louisiana. Big swing and a miss for strike one. Hebel has some power. She does have one home run on the year. One of her four hits is, has left the yard. Recruited as a power hitter down there at Lafayette. Bearcats just five home runs all season, relying more on their speed so far this year. Yeah, and talking to Coach Vallis, he did mention that they haven't hit as many home runs as he thought they would. We'll finish that thought. Coming up after the break, because Dolcini just ended the inning, another inning ending strikeout for the senior. Texas playing host to a regional here, McCombs Field, for the first time in six years. Sam Houston mm -hmm. State's in a regional for the first time since 2007. Iacopo crushes one to deep left. It is gone. This one drilled to deep center field, and the Bearcats have jumped in front. A shocker here in Austin. The Bearcats have stunned the Longhorns. The game Texas fans want to forget. 2-1 Sam Houston State win in the 2019 Regional over number nine Texas that year. Bearcats won 35 games, their most since 2013. Garrett Vallish, Southland Conference Coach of the Year, all kinds of accolades for this squad. That was their biggest season in quite a long time. And again, that was early on during his tenure as he's now in his fourth year with the squad. J.J. Smith, Lange can't handle that one. Lead off, hit her aboard. J.J. Smith being aggressive on a first pitch she sees, trying to avoid seeing that changeup if she can. Pulls this ball, drives it right to Lange. It is hit hard. Lange just unable to stop it. 
another first. Uh, a lead off hitter aboard. Yeah. Runner. It was Scott kind of train of thought. in the first, and now Smith E4, first error of the night for Sam Houston State. Here's Jordan Whitaker, snapped out of an 0 for 14 slump with hits in her last two games against Tulsa and Texas State. And Mike White kept sticking with her, waiting for her to get going, and she has. Yeah, we've seen adjustments in Jordan Whitaker's swing a little bit. When you watched her hit in Clearwater, she was a little bit more up in her stance, standing a little more straight up. Notice that she started Ooh. to get down in her legs a little bit. That didn't help her lay off that change up above her head. That was nasty. It was. It floats. It's one of those, when it floats in there, you think it might float down. So a hitter gets a little bit too aggressive. At the same time, it's floating right there. You think you can just hit it kind of like a pinata. Bill Meyer had a big grin on her face after that. That one rolls to the catcher. Smith takes off, and she is thrown out at second by Schaefer. Texas has been running a lot this year. That's just the third time they've been thrown out now in 32 attempts. JJ Smith reads this ball in the dirt. It wasn't a straight steal. However, it doesn't get by Schaefer, so she's able to jump up and make a great throw. Looks like Coach White, I saw him do the headset signal he's going to review because J.J. Smith said she got around it from that angle, actually. It looks like her foot did get around it. It's whether she stayed on the bag the whole time prior to getting tagged. So an official challenge by Mike White again, the first year has been put to use. The umpires will take a look at that. We'll look at that one again in just a moment as J.J. Smith reaching on the error, trying to steal second moments later. Her foot does get around the bag and oh. touches the bag there. The question is, is she on the bag right there where the tag is made? Oh, you mean did she come off of it after? Yeah. So we'll have to see from this angle. So her foot's around the tag, touches the bag. There, though, oh, that's there's a no great part point. of her on the bag. You're right. It looked like she beat the initial tag, but then came off of it. Yeah. I don't think her foot stayed on. Looks like they've made their decision. Call stands. Smith is out. Looked to be the correct call as well. So Texas now 29 of 32 in stolen base attempts. On the season, now keep in mind, Texas on an unbelievable pace. Last year, they had 65 stolen bases. If they play the same amount of games this year, they would be on pace for 103 stolen bases. But Smith not successful there. One, two, coming up to Whitaker, lays off that one. I like the aggressiveness by Texas, being able to run. Smith trying to read the ball in the dirt. I think she needs to read it a little bit earlier so she gets a little better jump. And at the same time, make sure it kicks away or bounces off the catcher. Because Schaefer had a clean throw after fielding that. Whitaker staying patient at the plate, meanwhile, working the count full. Payoff pitch on the way, and there is the tenth strikeout of the year for Whitaker. And Bill Meyer with her first two strikeouts of the season tonight. Yeah, Bill Meyer doing a good job of throwing to all parts of this zone. We've seen the change up here. You see another drop ball, and it's out off the corner, low. Texas just being overly aggressive when they don't necessarily have to be. Here's Alyssa Washington starting her fifth straight game in place of the injured Mackenzie Parker. Nine straight games without an error for the sophomore from Abilene. So Texas threatening in both innings, but at times running themselves out of it. Jefferson got tagged on the rundown between third and home, and Smith, after reaching to lead off the inning, gets thrown out at second. This one to left field, past the diving tell. Melissa Washington continues to get it done. A 
Alyssa Washington just extends through this ball and you see her drive it straight into left field. Pass a diving Telg. Alyssa Washington just trying to get herself going offensively. You talk about her coming in, replacing an injured Mackenzie Parker the last five games. She put on a clinic defensively last weekend. There's another player who's come on as of late. Alyssa Papelka got her first start of the year last Friday against Arizona State. And she hasn't been out of the lineup since over those last five starts, hitting 583. A hit in every game. A couple of walks. And of course, as usual, strong defensive play. Unable to get the bunt down. The bunt game is one area we saw Texas struggle against Arizona State. They attempted to bunt nine times and not a single one went down in fair territory. So that has to be an area that Coach Mike White, Coach Singleton are talking about to these hitters. They have to figure out how to execute in order for them to have success the rest of the season. Yep, that issue a work in progress for Texas's offense. Two outs here in the second. The Longhorns have been brilliant with two outs this year, scoring 40% of their runs. That one over to second. Lange on to first, and the inning comes to an end. So two batters reach. Still one nothing after two. Haley Dolcini, the senior transfer, getting it done with a rise ball so far. Yeah, Haley Dolcini through two innings, has 13 swing and misses, majority of them on this rise ball, really breaking through the zone tonight. These Bearcat hitters just not able to lay off it, but that's so effective because she's getting ahead in the count with her other pitches. Four strikeouts for Dolcini as we begin the third. Her rise ball is a pitch that she's been throwing a lot this season, but she hasn't had as much control through the zone as she would like. She's been throwing it high above hitters' heads for chase pitches, but when you're not ahead in the count, so they can lay off that. So good adjustment by Dulcini to be able to come out tonight attacking the zone and then letting that rise ball work from, belt, from the belt high up. And struck out seven in her last start against Tulsa. Fan 12 earlier this year against Florida Gulf Coast. So far tonight has fan for the first eight batter she's faced. Now one and one to Emily Telg. Sophomore from Caldwell at 321. A couple of seasons ago, trying to get going this year. Off to a two for 26 start. The Bearcats' inconsistency has been their weakness, according to Coach Valish. Telling, talking with him, he says there's some bright spots, and then there's some not bright spots. He's like, it's just a constant inconsistency. I'm not quite sure what I'm getting every day as far as production goes. Well, we know what we're getting from Haley Dolcini tonight. So one time through the order, she strikes out five of the first nine batters she has now faced. And it's another rise ball. She uses this pitch well, sets it up by going low and in for her strikes and then expanding the zone upwards. You mentioned the inconsistency the Bearcats have experienced. I mean, only one senior active right now. This batter, Sheridan Fisher. Yeah, Sheridan Fisher, and then not here tonight, Kendall Kutak. Have to wonder if she's coming back for a COVID senior year. Coach Valish mentioned her, she was a senior, but she's listed as a junior um, on their roster. But still, those two are the, the most experienced players you have. And when you're in a battle season, you want some people with some seasoning, with some experience to talk about. And Dolcini, it's Fisher right there. The Bearcats, to their credit, they've had a base runner in each of the three innings so far. See if they could take advantage here in the third. Which is three upperclassmen, 19 sophomores and freshmen combined. It's interesting to look across the country. It's how many 
organ or how many programs have an incredible amount of sophomores because of that COVID year. A lot of people getting an extra year and now reclassified in what you would have as juniors normally. But Coach Valish mentioning the inexperience they have and he said it may cost them, but he's gonna play them because he wants them to get that experience. He wants them to figure out how to battle throughout the game. And he really just wants them to be able to build off of whatever experience they get this year. Right before they begin conference play coming up. Count 0-2 to Kenzie Lange, a strikeout victim back in the first. And once again, make it six Ks for Dolcini. Strong start for the senior. Dolcini painting the corner with this screwball that she's been throwing. Lange probably expecting up. Coach Mike White and Dolcini mixing it up a little bit to get her looking. Brody Quinley with a home run hack, swing and a miss. Walked in the first inning, Quinlan. Five RBIs on the season, one homer. An impressive start to her freshman campaign this year. They're gonna need her to come up big tonight. But she's behind 0-2. Well, Delcini is continuing to be extremely effective. I do want to tip my hat. The Bearcats are taking their hacks. Even after striking out quite a few times, they're being aggressive. But unable to make contact. The third inning ending strikeout of the game by Dolcini. Seventh K on the night. And she is cruising as we head to the bottom of the third. Scott and Jefferson coming up to bat here in the third. This is what they did to start off the game. Mia Scott with a leadoff double. And shortly after that, Janae Jefferson brings her home with a triple that would roll all the way back to the wall. That's been the difference so far. one nothing Texas. Mia Scott doesn't have enough at bats, by the way, to be considered among the leaders in the nation. She's currently hitting 516. If she qualified, that would put her up at the 16th best batting average in the country. Not bad for the true freshman. I would think she has to be hovering near the minimum bat at bats for to be considered on that list. Yeah, now 31 at bats on the season. And while the Bearcats hanging in there, fell behind early, but still within one. Corner infielders pinching in at off speed. In there for strike one. Yeah, Mia Scott and Janae Jefferson both didn't see that off speed pitch their first at bats. And I am going to take an educated guess that it's because they both can bunt fairly well. And obviously an off speed pitch is easier to bunt, so they didn't show it to them. But with Mia Scott standing in, they're taking the chances. Mia Scott hitting nearly 600 when leading off an inning. What's impressed you most about her bat? You want to say the obvious and the consistency of it, but really what impresses me is even within one single at bat, you'll see her be a triple threat. She'll try to bunt, she'll run through the box, then she'll hit you with some power. Um, but at, at the same time, when she gets behind in the count, she doesn't try to do too much. And that's where she's found herself some singles up the middle and, and finds the hole. So she's just really, she keeps things simple, but at the same time does some big damage. And patient as well. Scott has seven walks, second most on the team. And could earn another right here as she awaits the 3-2 pitch. Takes this one to second, Lange on to first. It's a big out for the Bearcats. That is a big out and a big pitch right there in a full count situation with an athlete that can run like Mia Scott. 
One of the keys for this Bearcats team in order to stay in this game is to eliminate the free passes. And so far, they haven't given up any to the Longhorns. Here's today Jefferson, since being moved out of the leadoff spot, has hits in four of her last five games. Has bumped that average on the season up to 333. After her triple in the first, Jefferson now 14 hits away from 300 for her career. Janae Jefferson will go down as one, as one of, if not the best hitter this program has seen. And she's on pace to break the all-time Big 12 record for hits as well. Within striking distance, within 50 hits of Sammy Williams. The consistency with which she hits with is what is the most impressive. You mentioned four of the last five she has, has hits in, but she'll go on hit streaks, on base streaks, and it's just a consistent output constantly. And I don't know that I can recall maybe Brigitte Washington, because Brigitte had the speed, she could bunt, slap a little bit, but again, that's the record Janae broke in order to have the hits record here at Texas. Make it two for two, there's another hit for the senior. Janae keeping it simple, doesn't necessarily get extended through this pitch, slices it a little bit, but nonetheless a hit down the left field line. Another chance for Texas to move a base runner around. She's got two of their four hits tonight. Here is Mary Iacopo. Iacopo has driven in seven runs on the season. It's a good spot there by Bill Meyer using her drop ball, just low and at the knees. Jefferson, five stolen bases. Five for six on the year. She was going as Iacopo fouled one off. Same pitch by Bill Meyer, Mary Iacopo. Has the ability to drive it opposite field. Janae Jefferson called for leaving early on that steal attempt. So again, the base running for Texas continues to haunt them. That is the third time once in each inning. Yeah, Texas base running has run them out of, or run them into some outs, but Janae Jefferson takes off just a step early. First base umpire, Lyndon Baptiste. Well, that really hurts you now, considering this one rolls all the way back to the wall. That would have easily scored Jefferson. It's a two out double for Iacopo. What should have been an RBI opportunity, but instead Mary Iacopo with a two out double. Again, we talk about her ability to go opposite field. She does that well, driving that into the right center gap. Fifth double of the year for Iacopo, team leading eighth extra base hit for Mary. Two away runner in scoring position for Katie Simmons, the freshman who struck out in the first. Backtracking Alex to Janae Jefferson leaving early. We saw that in the Texas Classic as well. So. Texas having to work on, on the timing of getting off the base with the pitcher. A runner cannot leave the base until the pitcher has released the ball. So when you saw the replay, Janae Jefferson was off about a step early. It's a big second out. Here's the 0-1 on the way from Bill Meyer. Again, in her first start of the season, has held the Longhorns to one run, five hits, Yet to walk a batter also. Yeah, Coach Valish wanting his pitchers to eliminate free passes. She's done that. She's used her changeup just enough to keep them off balance and have them thinking about it. Swing and a miss. How about Bill Meyer? First three strikeouts of the season coming tonight. one nothing Texas after three. Time to take a look at the game summary brought to you by thezebra.com. The story for Texas, Haley Dolcini. 
She struck out the side in two of the three innings so far. Seven Ks on the night. Janae Jefferson has driven in the only run of the game. And Christine Billmeyer in her first start of the year holding Texas to one run through three. Yeah, Sam Houston doing a great job of keeping this game close, scattering five hits. Again, talking about eliminating free passes. The other key Coach Vallis talked about was not allowing the big inning, especially in the second half of this game. So you have to know he's going to have a pitcher ready if they need it. They've really had great starts from pitchers, and then one or two innings where it just kind of implodes, and he's really trying to figure out what's the best way to use his staff and also how to keep his pitchers focused to where those don't happen. But they're certainly within striking distance. Meanwhile, Haley Dolcini carrying the load for Texas tonight. Seven strikeouts, one walk, just one hit allowed, a single in the second. And the Bearcats have had a runner on in every inning, a walk in the first, that single in the second, and Sheridan Fisher was hit in the third inning. Anna Schaefer struck out to end the first. Fouls this one into the stands. But we have a web gem, I'm being told here at McCombs Field. Oh, look at that one. Oh. Top row. Well done. Got yourself a souvenir. Oh, look at it. I think it looks easy. Another day at the office for <laughs> Absolutely. that guy. Absolutely. One, two on the way to Schaefer. Cranks this one foul. One of the points that Garrett Vallish made about Hannah Schaefer is the fact that she's learning how to battle within an at-bat. We saw her first at bat. She struck out on a change up after chasing a rise ball. Then we see her this at bat. She got down 0-1, but has continued to foul off pitches until that one. Whew. Three in a row struck out by Dolcini. She's up to eight on the night. In case you were wondering, Dolcini's Career high with the Longhorns. Her brief career so far is 12 earlier this year against Florida Gulf Coast. But career high in general going back to Fresno State, 18 strikeouts in a game. So still got a ways to go. But has struck out eight of the 13 she has faced so far. And when she was in the portal, that had to be what caught Coach, White, Coach White's eyes. It was not only her success being an All-American, but anytime you can get a strikeout pitcher added to your staff, it just strengthens it and allows your defense to be able to re relax a little bit, play on their toes, not constantly being on their heels or wondering where the ball is going to go. Just a polished pitcher, and he's really doing a great job of helping her up her game as we see her starting to hit stride. She's got more than 600 strikeouts during her time with Texas and Fresno State. The number that jumps out at you, we talked about the strikeouts, but opposing batters came in only hitting 177 against her on the year, and that number has certainly dropped through the first three and a third of this one. Count two and two to Kylie Hobbs, grounded out in the second, and does so again here in the fourth. It's played by Jefferson. Four in a row retired by Dulcini Jefferson and the Longhorns. Here's Ellie Grill. That was a hot shot of Janae down there at second base. I think she was actually losing her footing. She kind of threw that on a rushed throw. Even her on Lost footing is better than 99% of the second base around the country with perfect footing. Very true. She is extremely athletic, was a multi-sport multi athlete in high school. And you can just see that with a lot of the plays that she makes. Holly Grill sending one foul. Well, Dolcini pitching a gem tonight. Led the nation in shutouts a year ago with 14. A couple of perfect games as well with Fresno State. And we talk about her struggle in Clearwater with this team. 
And a lot of times when you're used to that, that type of success coming from Fresno State, and then you kind of hit the wall where you struggle a little bit, and you haven't struggled to that extreme in your career, you start to kind of question yourself of what's going on, am I going to get back? Those kind of thoughts, and I think Dulcini was starting to maybe spiral in that direction a little bit, and Coach White, given her innings that are gaining her confidence, allowing her to really start to throw the ball well. Over her last two starts, she struck out 15. 0-2 with two-way misses. Great back-to-back -back rise balls, stair-stepping just a little higher to see if she can get Grill to chase. She ended the first three innings with a strikeout and does so here in the fourth. Nine Ks through the first four innings of this one for Haley Dolcini, keeping it one nothing Texas. In her first start of the season, Christine Billmeyer has limited the Longhorns, who came in averaging five and a half runs per game to just one run so far tonight and no walks from the sophomore up to this point. Yeah, the sophomore really impressing in the circle. Simple, using a drop and a change, locating well, keeping that drop ball down at the knees, even stretching it off the plate, getting a couple Longhorns to chase it outside. But so far, very impressive from Bill Meyer. Lauren Burke leading off the fourth against Bill Meyer. Burke rounded out to end the first inning. However, since being put back in the starting lineup, Burke has reached in each of the last four games. Home run, a couple of doubles and four runs driven in during that time. Yeah, and Texas, Texas' second game of that Texas Classic against UTSA. Lauren Burke left the park, hit the fence, did a little bit of all, caught herself on fire a bit, just continued that. Texas not relying on the home run too much this year. 11 home runs in their first 16 games. Lange retires Burke. Texas keeping Lange busy over there at second mm -hmm. base. Another ground ball. And that's a result of Bill Meyer and her placement of this drop ball. That one was up a little bit, not as low at the knees as some of her others have been. But when it's the speed it is, as a hitter, you get aggressive and you think you can really hit that hard. Texas is going to have to try to drive those balls up the middle to get themselves on. And the Smith got the best of Lange in the second inning, reaching on an error by the second baseman. Then got thrown out. Moments later, J.J. Smith starting her fifth straight game. Three hits and three RBIs over the previous four. That off speed has been catching Texas off guard all night long. Yeah, it, it floats in there. It's about 10 miles an hour slower than what she's throwing. And when she can throw it for a strike, it's really hard for these Texas hitters to pick it up. Smith gets in front of that one off of Hobbs. Second error of the contest that J.J. Smith will reach on. They're still digging for it. And Smith ends up on third. Bill Meyer goes with three change-ups in a row. This one a little high, and the spin on that catches Hobbs to where she can't field that cleanly. Right fielder Quinlan Brody wasn't in position to back up. That ball gets by her as well, which allows J.J. Smith to get the extra 60 feet, end up on third base. And that passion right there is what Coach White, why J.J. Smith is in the lineup for Coach White's Longhorns. Brings the energy. Meanwhile, here's a pinch hitter, Bella Dayton, the sophomore transfer hitting for Jordan Whitaker. Dayton trying to break out of a slump, hitless in her last six. Bella Dayton has the experience to really contribute to this lineup. Slow start here with the Longhorns. I'm curious to know if it's because you transfer in in January. Not as much time to necessarily get gelled with your teammates, to get comfortable in the program. 
Some people may disagree with that thought process, but. Well, you look at her track record, you're right. I mean, historically, she hit above 300 last year with Arizona. So yeah. Talent is there. Yeah, and that's where I wonder if it's that, that gelling piece or that just getting comfortable piece because, you know, Arizona, Pac-12, she faces great competition day in and day out. So her experience and her success there really can add to this lineup. Texas one for five so far tonight with runners in scoring position. They've had at least one runner on in every inning. Dayton with two RBIs during her Texas career lays down the perfect bunt and everybody's safe. Still just one out here. Now runners on the corners in the fourth. This is why Bella Dayton was inserted in the lineup. Bill Meyer keeps throwing this change up and that's an easy pitch for a bunter to bunt. Bella, Bella Dayton puts that down. Sam Houston playing like it was gonna be a squeeze but JJ Smith not running, allowing Texas to now have two runners aboard and I would assume that within the first two pitches we're gonna say Bella Dayton take off to second. She thought about running there even after reaching first, advancing, and now Garrett Vallish talks things over with his squad in a crucial point in this ball game. Tight one run game, but Texas with a golden opportunity, two on, just one out. And Alyssa Washington coming up after a singling in the second inning. Mike White discussing the base running with Texas. Yeah, Mike White talking about base running, making sure they're smart because they do want to figure out how to get J.J. Smith home. On the opposite side, Coach Garrett Vallish talking about how can we keep these runners at bay. If anything, let's limit it to one run, not let this be busted open. There you see Sam Houston has had a lot of big innings with a lot of crooked numbers up there, and that's what Coach Vallish wants to try to eliminate and knows that they have to start eliminating if they're going to be competitive in the WAC conference. So here is Alyssa Washington with J.J. Smith on third, Bella Dayton on first, Washington hitting 261 on the year. Dayton is going, no throw. That is the 30th stolen base of the year for the Longhorns. Alyssa Washington just deking a bunt. And try to see what the Sam Houston defense is gonna do. Allow Bella Dayton to safely get into scoring position to where now a single will drive in two. Washington takes one to center field. Grill rushes in to make the grab. J.J. Smith tags and then retreats to third. Big out by the Bearcats. Drop on the outside corner by Bill Meyer. This is off the end of Washington's bat. Grill stays behind that ball well and a laser home. If J.J. Smith had run, she would have been hosed. Absolutely. What an arm and a great throw online. Ellie Grill, the sophomore from Angleton. So Alyssa Papelka was getting ready to bat. But it looks like we're going to have a pinch hitter. Interesting for Alyssa Papelka, who had been hot, hitting 583 over her last five games. Instead, Bree Cantu, the sophomore, will take her place. We did see Bree Cantu entered as a pinch hitter against Tulsa. She came up with two hits. Coach White trying to probably go with a little bit more power than Papelka displays. However, the speed of Papelka, Dayton, and if J.J. Smith is just on the move, that could force the Bearcats to have to make some good plays. But looks like Coach White's going to try for the power. Cantu drew a big pinch hit walk in the bottom of the seventh. That's Friday to load the bases against Arizona State in that loss. She's hitting 235 on the year, six runs driven in. Dayton on second, Smith on third. Takes one over to short, backhanded by Tell. Oh, what a play at short by Tell to end the inning. So Texas strands two here in the fourth. 
And it remains a one-run game after four, thanks to the defense of the Bearcats. Haley Dolcini getting the job done in the circle tonight. The All-American last year with Fresno State, Portland Softball America, Mountain West Pitcher of the Year. Top 15 in the country a year ago in wins, ERA, and shutouts. Living up to the hype tonight, she has struck out nine of the 15 batters she has faced, and Texas has needed every bit of her stellar pitching tonight in this close game. Yeah, this game remaining close, but Dalsini keeping the momentum on Texas' side, limiting the Bearcats just to one hit, having nine strikeouts, and looking like the form that I think Texas fans and Coach White expected to see from her when she transferred in. Bella Dayton taking over in right field, meanwhile, in place of Jordan Whitaker. This is the final tune-up for Texas before they head to Tuscaloosa. They will face Alabama twice coming up this weekend, once on Friday, once on Saturday, the second-ranked team in the nation, Alabama. Alabama 15-0. They've committed just three errors all year, and they have a team ERA of .90. Yeah, that pitching staff led by Montana Fouts, one of the most well-known names in college softball right now. But not to be outdone, Dolcini. Now up to double-digit strikeouts, 10. Again, her season high is 12. On pace to shatter that right now. Dulcini mixing her pitches well, but seven of those 10 strikeouts have been on that rise ball that we showed you earlier. She really has that pitch under command tonight, which is exactly what Coach White wants to see going into this big weekend against Arizona, or Alabama, excuse me. Well, you look at between Dulcini and Sophia Simpson, they're pitching as of late. I mean, there's your one, two right now. People did not go around. Yeah, after that trip to Florida, Coach White trying to figure out who the ace of his staff was. Everyone struggling a little bit in Florida. He did say he liked the way Simpson and Estelle Chet competed, but he really wanted to see Dulcini get back on track because her fiery passion and just the way she competes is something that he wanted to see out there on a consistent basis. And it looks like she's gotten herself back into form and would expect to see her and Simpson as the one-two punch, 1A, one 1B one as they move forward. And they both have that aces mentality, that swagger, <laughs> as the count even at two. Yeah, they both have swagger. Sophia Simpson walks around with a lot of confidence. I'd like to see it, especially out of a freshman. And Dulcini working at a really confident pace tonight, which is a little bit of a change. This one launched, but foul. Ebo was ahead of that one. The biggest Rise. thing with this rise ball is that Dulcini tucks it inside. Early in the season, she was leaving it a little bit over the plate. Tonight, it's really tucked in on these right-handed hitters, well, even the left-handed hitters, but she's not missing to where they can get the barrel to it. Ready with the 2-2. Pitch number 75 on the night. Good miss, with her. Looks on. <laughs> Good miss with her curveball right there. Facing only her second three ball count tonight. And we'll do it again. I do like seeing more curveballs and off speed pitches from Dulcini tonight. I think she was getting a little predictable that she was only going to live inside, and hitters can adjust to that. The 3 2 with one away. Jefferson's there for out number two. A rare pop up. First of the night. Full count. Dulcini brought that rise ball down just a little bit, but still enough spin and movement that he will got. Um, under it. Dulcini has retired seven in a row. Here is Emily Tell who came up with that fantastic defensive play in the bottom half of the last inning to keep it a one-run game. 
And they've had a couple of errors in this one, but they've also come up with some great defensive plays as well. Yeah, their tenacity is something that Coach Valish said is their strength. He feels like when they get punched, they figure out a way to punch back. And even if they get down by big numbers, they continue to push and chip away and try to find a way to stay in the ball game. And he really likes their tenacity. Telga head 2-0. And there's strike one. Be interested to see. We saw Telg show bunt on the first pitch of this at bat. If in the next two innings, the Bearcats try to play a little bit of small ball and force Texas's defense to have a little bit more action. Count even up. Telg struck out in the third. Dolcini has ended every inning so far with a strikeout. One fouled off. Ten strikeouts, one walk, one hit allowed by Dolcini. That is all. Another inning ending K. Haley Dolcini up to 11 strikeouts on the night. What a gem by the senior. Texas trying to get a little breathing room offensively coming up next at the bottom of the fifth. Mia Scott is a, a kid that who's probably one of the most talented players I've had into my program as a freshman over the year as far as just raw talent. Scott takes this one, arrived in deep center off the wall. Another extra base hit. She's been very effective putting the bat on the ball, but also using her wheels. Amazing speed as fast as anybody I've had. Drops a great bunt, strong arm in the infield. She is so fast, so explosive. Mia Scott was highly recruited for a reason. To be a spark plug for a long time. Well, Texas struck gold with Mia Scott, number five infield recruit in the nation out of Angleton. Former Texas A&M commit, came to Austin instead. <laughs> Boy, is Texas happy that she did. Currently hitting 500 on the year. 538 when leading off an inning, but retired here to begin the fifth. Scott now one for three on the night. Mia Scott being hailed as essentially the next Janae Jefferson. Mm -hmm. Gonna play over there at third base, but both of them triple threats from the left side. Here is Janae now 13 hits away from 300 after tripling in the first to drive home the only run and singling in the third. And we talk about Mia Scott a lot and we talked about Janae Jefferson getting back on track the first few games of the Texas Classic. I think Mia Scott's presence and the fact that she's been able to produce has allowed Janae Jefferson to relax and find her game again. Unable to lay down the bunt. Texas out hitting Sam Houston State 6-1. And again, Jefferson with two of those six hits. Texas has not fallen short of having opportunities to score. Mm -hmm. Corners playing in. I'd be interested to know what the offensive plan in the dugout is with Bill Meyer throwing. You know she can throw that changeup for a strike. Bella Dayton's the only person who's even attempted to bunt the changeup. And she did that successfully. But at the same time, Bill Meyer has almost been effectively wild. She doesn't pound the strike zone with that drop ball. So what are they talking about with that drop ball? Are they trying to drive it up the middle? Are they trying to take it? The few strikeouts she does have, she's stretched the plate with it. They haven't been in the zone. Behind 3-1 to Jefferson. Yeah, Bill Meyer, credit to the sophomore. I mean, last year, Again, she gave up three runs in just a third of an inning to Texas. Three walks and was pulled. Tonight, yet to walk a batter. One run allowed. 
And now facing her 20th batter of the contest. Back up the middle, snared by Bill Meyer. This defense stepping up lately for the Bearcats. Another drop ball outside. Janae Jefferson drives this up. Bill Meyer just able to stick the glove out. Doesn't rush a throw. Runs over, makes a good toss for the second out. She's induced seven ground outs tonight. Yeah, this is a, a, a game of, of two different stories. Haley Dulcini throws rise balls, up spin, so you see a lot of strikeouts. We saw the first pop up, but she would get more of those. Iacopo gives one a ride, but it will die down in the glove of Grill. So Texas put one run up in the first, but that's it against Bill Meyer. Got a close one here in Austin. An absolute pitcher's duel so far between Haley Dolcini and Christine Billmeyer. But how about Dolcini's strikeout numbers? 11 strikeouts facing 18 batters. Billmeyer has yet to walk a batter. I mean, these two hurlers going back and forth. There's a one run scored total between these two teams. Dolcini, one strikeout shy of tying Texas's season high by a pitcher. And whoever comes up with the next run, that is going to be absolutely huge. Because these offenses have been held at bay against these two pitchers. Sheridan Fisher leading off Alyssa Washington clean over at short. Yeah, before we went to break, Alex, talking about how this is a tale of two different pitchers. Dolcini, you'll see a lot of pop-up strikeouts with the rise ball. Her changeup has been what has been put in play hard, at least over to Janae Jefferson. And then you have on the opposite side, Bill Meyer with that drop ball. That's why you see so many ground balls because the downspin, if you can't, if you don't stay through it hard, you're going to get a lot of ground balls. And Bearcats able to defend nicely behind Bill Meyer. Well, Dolcini has retired nine in a row. Sam Houston State hasn't had a base runner since the third inning. Kenzie Lange, one and one. I wonder if Sam Houston's discussion in their dugout was to just try to make some things happen. We saw Fisher run through the box. She didn't do that her first at, her first two at bat. She was swinging away. That followed up by Telg, who was showing bunt for the last out in the top of the fifth. We talked about what happened here three years ago, the 2019 regional, when the Bearcats upset then number nine Texas 2-1. And Sam Houston State trying to hang with Texas here. Lange gave that one a ride, but Papelka, with her great speed, tracked it down two away. Just such a difference having her starting every night out there. Yeah, the speed that Papelka possesses allows pitchers to pitch a, bit, a little bit more freely because you know she can run down almost anything that's hit into the grass. Off the bat, that ball looked like it could have been possibly a double. But Papelka gets under and says, not today. This will be the first time since the second inning that Dolcini has not struck out at least two in an inning. Ground out and a fly out issued so far. Here's Brody Quinlan walked in the first and struck out in the third. The Bearcats looking like they're making some adjustments, getting a little bit shorter swings, trying to attack earlier in the, in the count. You know, the big thing for Haley Dolcini, she had a team high 16 walks and 33 innings coming into this. So far, just one tonight. That's it. One through five and two thirds. Only one walk, only two three ball counts. Doing a good job of commanding the zone. And ahead now, one and two to Quinlan. 
The Bearcats one for 18 tonight against Dolcini. And Texas has won four in a row. Bearcats have dropped three straight. Bearcats fouling off a few more pitches now, their third time through the lineup than they did early in the game, adjusting to the way Dulcini's throwing. Another strikeout. That matches a season high for any Longhorns pitcher with 12. And it's the second time this year Dulcini's done it. one nothing on to the bottom of the sixth. We go. Well, the way this game started, you thought maybe Texas's offense is in for a big night. Mia Scott led off the game with a double. Janae Jefferson, the next batter, drove her home with a triple. But since then, the Texas offense has been held at bay. Five straight retired by Christine Billmeyer in her first start of the season. Getting ready to face Simmons, Burke, and Smith here in the sixth. Billmeyer really kept this, has kept this offense off balance. Her changeups floated in there. I think right as Texas was, was adjusting to trying to hit the changeup, she starts using that drop ball and stretching the plate. Simmons gives one a ride to deep left center, and it's gone! The freshman leaves the yard! And right as I talk about Bill Meyer making adjustments, Katie Simmons makes adjustment after her two strikeouts and lines this right over the fence. Katie Simmons with her third home run of the year. That leads the Longhorns. Bill Meyer making the only mistake of the game she's made this far, leaving this ball over the heart of the plate. Simmons attacking aggressively. Wasn't sure that ball was going to get out. I thought it was going to hit the top of the wall. Simmons has been fantastic here in her first season with the Longhorns. She's now reached an eight straight, hitting 500 in the previous seven games. And now with a team high, three home runs on the year. And Texas with a little bit of breathing room now up 2-0 as Lauren Burke takes ball one. Yeah, and all this talk about the game staying close, Alex, you can't let Sam Houston stay around. If you want to win this game, you have to be able to put more runs on the board. They're feisty. They've come back from deficits to win all five of their ball games. They've had to come back, only win by one run or extra innings, but they have fought their way to their five victories, so you let them hang around, they're going to put a charge in this game. Texas now with two runs off seven hits. And the Bearcats have been held to one hit on the night. Here's a 2-0 to Lauren Burke. Chops one over to first. Hobbs backhands it for out number one. Two well-hit balls and two at-bats for this Texas lineup. Lauren Burke scorching ground ball to Hobbs there at first. Looks like the Longhorns are adjusting to the drop ball that Bill Meyer's throwing, finding a way to keep the barrel through it. So after the Simmons home run, Texas now with 12 home runs on the year. And what is their 17th game of the season? Here is J.J. Smith. Has twice reached on an error. Texas looking for win number five in a row after they had dropped six straight. Longhorns looking to carry the momentum from this weekend into next weekend as they face Alabama and Miami of Ohio. Headed to Tuscaloosa for a four game stretch. Both those games will be on SEC Network Plus. Right now, you don't want to jinx it if you're a Texas fan, but on pace to have no errors in a game for the fourth time in their last five contests. You're shaking your head at me. Should I have waited till I the conclusion know. of this ball game to mention that? I guess not. One, two on the way to Smith. Over to Lange. Has to wait for it. 
two away. Honestly, with the way Haley Dolcini's throwing, I think it's safe. <laughs> it's safe to say that they're most likely going to get through this game with no errors. And you have to tip your hat. Alyssa Washington thrown into shortstop here in the last six games after not playing a whole lot there at the start of the season. And she's made it look easy, made some amazing plays, not only this weekend, but we saw a good play earlier this game. And really, the, the defense not missing a beat with McKenzie Parker having to be out. So there's no, been no communication issues or coverage issues. So really good for Texas to be able to plug Washington in and continue on. Dolcini looks on, ready to come out for the seventh. Locked in. Here's Bella Dayton. Pinch hit for Jordan Whitaker. Delivered a bunt single in the fourth inning. Her fifth hit of the year is a Longhorn. Sophia Simpson. Hanging around in the bullpen. I would have to think she's getting a workout in. Not necessarily warming up for this game. Saw a stealth check out there earlier as well. Unless they're having her ready in case some runners get on. Two two with two away. Bella Dayton a little frustrated with herself, missing that changeup. Just fouling it off. I jumped watching her slam her bat to her foot rather hard. <laughs> one for one so far. Sends that one to left center. Grill tracking it and makes the grab in front of Fisher. So here we go, seventh inning on the way. Katie Simmons with her third bomb of the season. That means it's 2-0 Texas after six. Haley Dolcini looking for her third complete game of the season and team leading fourth win, three outs away. She has tied a Texas season high with 12 strikeouts. Just one walk allowed, one hit. Facing the four, five, and six hitters as the Bearcats again down to their last three outs. Here's Hannah Schaefer leading off. Sophomore catcher. Strikeout victim twice so far in this game by, so, by Dulcini. Defensive change, meanwhile, for Texas. Lou Gilbert taking over for Lauren Burke in left field. So Gilbert, Papelka, and Dayton in the outfield. Coach White and staff going with a little bit more speed out there. Allowing any line drives, pop flies, have a better chance of getting tracked down. Would not be surprised if Bella Dayton and Lou Gilbert can get going offensively to see this outfield more often. Schaefer back up the middle, and the tying run will come to the plate here in the seventh inning. That's just the second hit of the night for Sam Houston State. Dulcini goes outside with this curveball. It doesn't quite get to the outside corner. Hannah Schaefer does a good job just driving it back up the middle, right past Dolcini. And they will send a pinch runner in there for Schaefer as Kylie Hobbs comes to the plate. Well, you talked about Sam Houston State. They've had to rally for all their five wins this year, trailing in each of those contests as Caitlin Goodo, the sophomore, takes over at first. Hobbs 0 for 2 tonight, but hitting 289 on the season. Yeah, Hobbs has two home runs in the season as well, so the Bearcats excited to see her up to bat with a runner on. The biggest thing, Alex, is the Bearcats have made adjustments throughout this game. Even though they continue to have some strikeouts piled up, they swung and missed 16 times in the first three innings. Innings four, five, and six, and now seven, only four swing and misses. So they made adjustments to be able to try to get bat on ball, and we're, we saw that pay off with Schaefer, and now Kylie Hobbs. 
That's in good, this at bat. Good point. Dolcini with 12 strikeouts, but three of the last four have not struck out. The runner is going, and she is safe. Just barely. Schaefer was replaced by Caitlin Goodo, who ends up with a stolen base. She's in scoring position after the strikeout, one away, and Ellie Grill. He's momentarily coming up to bat, but we may see a pinch hitter. For Sam Houston, batting for Ellie Grill, number one, Reagan Dunn. So Reagan Dunn will be the pinch hitter, the veteran, still recuperating from injury, trying to get back to 100%. Junior from Cuero. Coming up in a huge spot, taking strike one. Primarily a pitcher. Don't think she's been used as a hitter much in her career. She did double last year in a brief appearance against Texas, so a little bit of success there. They're hoping for more here. Swings through that one for strike two. With her showing bunt and then running through the box, Coach Vallis just trying to make things happen. See if Reagan Dunn can just put the ball in play. Force Texas's defense to have to make a play and see if they can take any extra bases on any mistakes. Interesting, Alex, as we were trying to figure out who was pinch hitting, saw that she was standing up left handed, didn't realize she hit because she's a right handed pitcher. And Dolcini makes quick work of Dunn. And the Bearcats down to their last out. That is 13 strikeouts by Haley Dolcini, a season high for any Texas pitcher. And it'll be up to Braley Wasik, the freshman, to keep this one going. Texas looking for win number 10 on the year. Win number five in a row. Bradley Wasik had the first hit of this game, a single up the middle off of Haley Dolcini. Bearcats hoping she can come through with hit number two of the night. The 0 1 misses. There you see Texas outfielders have taken a couple steps back, playing no double D so they don't get beat on any ball over their head. So if a ball does fall in, in front or on the ground, they're going to go ahead and sacrifice the run from the runner at second. Dolcini has Sam Houston State on the ropes. Down to their last strike. 14 strikeouts on the night for Dolcini. Just one walk, two hits allowed. This is the part that gives me chills. Used to be my favorite part as a pitcher, too. The senior. Misses upstairs, two and two. The two strike clap, the two strike cheering. That was always the fun part of playing here at McCombs Field. She began the night with a strikeout. But we go to a full count. Sydney trying to work that rise ball outside there, see if she can get Wasik to chase. And a two out, full count walk issued here in the seventh inning. The tying run is over at first. That is the first walk issued by Dolcini since the first inning. Pinch runner Ali Seville taking over at first base. Runners on first and second for Elia Hebel. Struck out in the second. Popped up in the fifth inning. Fans getting into it here at McCombs where Texas is 5-1 on the year. Dolcini up to 106 pitches on the night. Here's number 107. Strike one. Dolcini going right at Hebel, which is what she has to do to set the tone in this situation. You have experienced senior going up 
against the freshman in what probably is the most pressure-packed situation she's been in so far. Launches one off the lights. But that's just a long strike. And that's what you have to be careful of, though, Alex. He will pack some power. She does have a home run on the year. She was a well-known power hitter when she was being recruited. But Dolcini has the upper hand with an 0-2 count. Over to first, Iacopo steps on the bag, and Haley Dolcini with the complete game victory records her team leading fourth win of the year, finishes the night with 14 strikeouts, and Texas improves to 10 and seven on the season, making it five wins in a row. Impressive night by Haley Dolcini in the circle. You've mentioned it multiple times, Alex, 14 strikeouts, but to me it was just the way she commanded the strike zone. Only two walks, didn't get behind hitters, was able to use that rise ball through the zone, allowed the Texas defense to be able to relax a little bit, not having pressure on them on both.